Year 5 and welcome to your first history lesson of this half term and we're going to be looking at the Vikings in history this half term. So I want you to start by thinking about what you already know about the Vikings, okay? Um, if you don't have access to the video link below, you can just look at the picture. Um, I'm going to play the video link hopefully in a moment and as you're watching I want you to think about which of these words best describe the Vikings. So we've got barbarian here, a barbarian is um, like somebody who is seen as wild or uncivilized. Okay, we've got raider, and a raider is, is somebody who would attack people um, in a country far away. So they might leave their own country to go and raid another country and um, to try and steal things and um, you know defame that kind of thing. I think the other ones you should know. So a builder, somebody who builds things. A trader is somebody who buys and sells things elsewhere. Bloodlust, so um, a lust for blood. Settler somebody who goes to settle somewhere, so maybe someone who, um, who goes to live somewhere else peacefully, and warrior, someone who fights. So have a think about those words as we watch the video, which one best conjures up the Vikings for you. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can share the video now. We're only going to watch the first minute though, if you want to rewatch it. Now, an investigation into the mysterious rise and fall of the barbarians known as Vikings. They conquered nature's fury at sea, and on land, shields and riveted ringed armor gave them the upper hand. Why did these raiders by design enjoy two centuries of success and then vanish? The secrets of the Viking warriors, right now on the National Geographic Channel. the most feared men in Europe, an unstoppable band of ruthless warriors, Vikings. For 1,200 years, the Vikings have been famed for their bloodlust, their barbarism, their prowess in war. But how much of the image is actually true? Okay, good question to leave us on there. So let's go back to those words. Um, so pause the video now and have a little think about which one of those words best describes the Vikings for you at the moment. Okay, so I want us to just have a, a bit of a dig into the Vikings, just to find out a little bit more about them. So we're going to have a look at some information here. I want you to read the information through and I want you to see if you can summarise the main points about who the Vikings were and what they believed. And I wonder, as you're reading, does anything surprise you about the Vikings? So remember that in order to summarize the main points, you've got to read the information and then just pull out the main things that you notice, okay? Um, I won't read it to you. Um, so good luck and yeah, have a think about what you have summarized because it's going to help you for the next task, okay? Um, on the next page, I want us to explore a little bit more about the Vikings. So there's another web link, a BBC Bite Size link that will take you to some more information, because this might paint a slightly different picture of the Vikings for you. OK, so again, read the information and see if you can summarise it. And does anything surprise you? OK, you might want to pause the video now. OK, so I can tell you that, um, you know, if I can summarise the last couple of pages, I know that the Vikings were adventurous, they took advantage of opportunities and they raided places that were weak, but they also created great trade routes and they were great explorers and travellers. And that kind of surprised me, actually, because I thought of the Vikings more as this barbarian or raider type. But actually, I now know from reading the information that Vikings were great traders and builders of ships. They were quite skilled people. So they weren't just um, all about bloodlust. They, they had lots of other beliefs as well and things that drove them. So hopefully you notice those things too. So now that we know a little bit more about who the Vikings were, I want us to explore their first raid in England, because of course they came from um, Norse countries like Scandinavia. So they sailed across the sea to England and they raided our shores. And the first raids were actually um, along the, the coast of Northumbria at a place called Lindisfarne. And the first Viking raid was recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle was around um, AD 787, so quite early on in our Anglo-Saxon time period. 
and it was the start of a fierce struggle between the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings, which you probably started to hear about already. Now, I want you to read the rest of the information on this page. Um, here's just a picture of what the holy island of Lindisfarne actually looks like today. I've been there, actually. There are seals nearby, if you like animals. Um, and when you've read the information, I want you to think about why the Vikings mainly chose monasteries like the holy island of Lindisfarne to raid when they first came to England. Why do you think they didn't go to, you know, towns and cities like York that were prosperous? Why monasteries? Okay, have a think about that now. Pause the video. Okay, if you want to look a bit more closely at Lindisfarne, there is another web link that you can look at, which is on Padlet and this document here. Okay. So now I want us to have a think about some of the written accounts of the Viking attack on Lindisfarne because some of the writing that people made about those attacks has survived all those years. It's a long old time that, isn't it? But I want us to create some atmosphere, some dramatic atmosphere. So I'm going to try and play the music of um, a piece of music that's quite dramatic while I read one of the accounts to you. So I'm going to read this one. You can always read the next one and you might need um, some help with an adult just to unpick some of the language, okay? But use your own reading skills too. So this is an extract of a letter from Al Suin, I think, a scholar from York. Okay, so York is a town now, but it was a town back then as well. And he's writing to King Ethelred. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna play my music. You might recognize it. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. Lo, it is nearly 350 years that we and our fathers have inhabited this most lovely island, and never before has such terror appeared in Britain as we have now suffered from a pagan race. Nor was it thought that such an inroad from the sea could be made. Behold, the church of St. Cuthbert spattered with the blood of priests of God, despoiled of all its ornaments a place more vulnerable, venerable than all in Britain is given us prey to pagan peoples. And where first, after the departure of St. Paulinus from York, the Christian religion in our race took its rise, their misery and calamity have begun. Who does not fear this? Okay. So you can always play more of the dramatic music and you can have a think about the, uh, the other extract too. But hopefully you get a sense of the, you know, the terror of this person who was writing. Perhaps they were somebody who um, was there and survived miraculously, or perhaps they were somebody who heard about the raid um, later on, okay? Possibly um, a scholar or a monk told him about this. There's just a few things here. It says, behold, the church of St. Cuthbert but splattered with the blood of the priests of God. That's not a very nice image, is it? Despoiled of all its ornaments. What do you think that means? Well, it basically means that they stole everything because of course we know that the Anglo-Saxons were great crafters and workers of fine metals. So they stole all those beautiful objects. Um, it's given as prey to pagan peoples. So it's like the pagan people are, um, are the sort of the wolves and the, the monks in the monastery were like the sheep, okay? So quite a terrifying thing to behold, I would say. Now, I want you to have a little bit of a, a go at imagining, okay? Put yourself in the, the shoes of those people. Um, I don't know why that's there. I want you to imagine being one of the monks in the monastery as the Vikings attacked. Why would you fear those Vikings? Can you imagine how it would be First seeing them, maybe thinking that they were just normal um, fishermen, perhaps, you know, you might have seen boats on the horizon before, but then realising that they were there to attack. Describe the event using your senses. So what would you see? What would you smell? What would you feel? Record your ideas around the picture. I know you'll be really good at using your senses because of all the work you've been doing in English. Then I want you to imagine that you're someone living close by and perhaps hearing about the raid just after it's happened. So maybe one survivor has managed to escape and has come to your village and has told you about this horrendous attack. How would you feel about that being so close? What would your worries and hopes be? Record your ideas in maybe another colour then around the picture so we can see the two different views. Okay, this will help you for your next tasks. So pause the video now and have fun imagining. Okay, so your tasks now, you've got two to choose from, so choose one or the other. You can either create a poster warning local Anglo-Saxons of Viking raids. So imagine that you are an Anglo-Saxon living in Northumbria. 
So you could include some information about how to tell if you're about to be raided, what to do if a raid happens. But remember to think Anglo-Saxon times, you're not going to text your friends or anything, are you? And you might want to decorate your poster with appropriate Anglo-Saxon imagery and artwork. So think about all the artwork you saw last half term, maybe illuminated lettering, um, maybe tea stains some paper to replicate vellum, which is what they used to write on. Um, use features like headings, bullet points, pictures to get your information across. The second task is um, in writing in role. So in character as a monk, write a letter describing the Viking raid on Lindisfarne. So those accounts there could help you with that, couldn't they? You might want to read those again. So you need to decide who you're writing to. Are you writing to a friend, a relative of yours, maybe a king, King Ethelred or King Alfred maybe? Remember to describe the event and include your hopes or fears for what will happen next. And you might even want to think who's responsible for this raid um, and what should be done about it. OK, so remember to share your work with us through the Year 5 email and have some fun with this task, OK? Enjoy your first history lesson. Bye, everyone.